All right. Our message for today is about the principles of planning for change. Change is what we have to deal with every day. And um, so continue from last week. Last week we talked about the two components, the most powerful components in life are times and change. So time and change is something that we cannot um, control. So, but we can learn to manage. Who can control time and who can control change? No one. But God gives us a principle how we can work along and we can manage the times and change. So we learned from last week in the book of Daniel, God showed us that he is the one who changed the time and seasons. This is what Daniel said, Lord, you are the one who changed the time and season. You set up king, you put one down, you set one up. And then in the book of Isaiah also telling us that God is no longer doing old thing. He always doing a new thing. Isaiah 43. And so he's doing new thing all the time. So he is not keeping whatever as a record in the past. And he wants us to do the same thing. As he moves, he wants us to move along with him. As his children, we need to learn to be smart and wise, just like the, the tribe of Issachar. They are very wise in terms of timing and changes. So when time and changes is given to us, uh, time is given to us each day, we have 24 hours. And changes is what that is we have to face all the time. It means nothing is the same, everything is change. So situation around us change, people around us change, we ourselves change. Only God is not changing. He do all the changes, but he's not changing himself. So everything changes for a certain reason. We know that God working out everything for the good for those who love him. And also he tried to bring people back to him. He reused people, he reused all the men into the situation there where men have to look for God. So this is the reason that everything is changed right now. So how to respond when, th when change is happening? So there's, this is our answer that we may respond to the change. We can ignore the change. We can't, we can't avoid change, but we can ignore it. We also can accept it, the change. We can adjust to the change. We can manage changes, but we also can be a victim of change when we do nothing at all. But today, our message is about planning, so we can prepare and plan for changes. So this is very important, yeah. So a man's life consists of how he uses time and manage changes. We become who we are as a result of how we use time and manage changes in our life. So this is very important. If we don't like who we are today, if we don't like where we are today, so what we have to do? Change. Change to do something else. But what is the something else that we're doing? If we know our Creator, if we know that He is our Lord and God, who give us the time and change, who also put us in this time right now on earth, um, we need to find out why we're here. So once we understand why we're here, we also understand that how to adapt to the change because everything change is because God will bring us into the destiny that he has set for us. He doesn't want us to stuck in the change. So um, this, these words, I want to show these words actually to tell us that God is the one who has a plan for our life already and he's the one who will guide us and lead us. So we are not here by accident. In Ephesians 1, 4, for he chose us in him before the creations of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight in love. So he has chosen us to be a holy people unto him, to be a nation unto him. Since when? Well, we are born 40 years ago, 50 years ago. No, God chosen us already since before the foundation of the world, since before he created the whole system to control the earth. He already know. Oh, from which tribe to which tribe from Adam, they are come to Adam. From which tribe to which tribe, they are come here. From which tribe to which tribe, they are come. 
Helena or some many many people right on earth today is seven point something billions people on earth today so that is not by accident everyone has a purpose and perfectly planned by God so this verse telling us that we are in God's plan and he said he made us in his image so he is a planner when he make us, he also make us to be like him, like a, be a planner as well. So we need to plan our life or else the changes will kill us. So anyone that cannot plan or don't have a plan for life, when change comes, the change will kill a person. Just like the former president said, the, the train of the, of the future will run past the person and the person cannot move. Because don't know the change, cannot adapt to the change. So change is very important. Another verse is that we need to remember. In Jeremiah 29, 11, this to show us that God has a plan. He is a planner. He said, for I know the plan I have for you, declare the Lord, plans for welfare and not for cal calamity, to give you a future and a hope. So God has a great plan for our life. So if something happened in our life that doesn't line up with God's plan and He will not allow. If something happened according to God's plan, even though in challenges, well, we had to persevere and trust God. He will always lead us into the destiny that He has set for our life. So this was telling us his, He has plan for our life, the plan for good and not evil. And also telling us He's a planner. So we are not here by accident, all in God's plan. And this we want to walk carefully according to His plan. And we want to plan our life as well. And for, uh, here from today's message, we will learn why God wants us to plan our life. Um, if we don't have a plan for our life, any road will bring us to, the, to somewhere that we are, not, and we, are, we are not supposed to be there. So a good plan is like a road map. It shows the fine destiny, destination, and usually the best way to get there. So this is um, what Horn Stanley George said. So very important. So if we want to have a road map in our life, without a road map, we don't know which road to go. We may end up in someone else's life. We may end up in someone else's um, destiny. As, and then we question, hey, why are we here with this person? We're surprised. We are, it is not for us. And at the end, the Lord will question, why are you here? I'm not putting you here. I put you somewhere else. You exit wrong road. And then you feel like, what? I have walked in the rest of my life, 70 years of my life. You just tell me I'm wrong. Because you never ask me. You never plan one. So we need to know, learn how to plan today. In the book of Proverbs 20, verse 18, plans are established by seeking advice. So if you wage war, obtain guidance. God told us how we plan by seeking advice. Oh, how do we do this? How do we do that? Okay, if I want to do this project, can you have to give me some ideas, some advice? How do I get that result? How do I get the people to come and help me? So how do I do that? So we seek advice. Then we can plan. Oh, this person telling me to do this, to do that. Okay, let me do the calculation and let me do the estimation or let me think whether it's lined up with God's plan for my life. So we always check. So that's why we seek advice and we wage war. So if a person who wants to war against a country of course, you need to estimate, you need to do a calculation how, uh, and then obtain guidance. Then you can go and wage the war and then you go and start the war or else you don't plan, you don't know how, um, how strong or how many people of the country that you want to against with or you, you, you don't know the strength, the strategy of the enemy, you may end up in losing that war. So you don't want to do that. So to have a successful life, we need to plan. And plan is a way to live life. Well, people in the Bible, 
all God chosen leader, they all are planner. They all are planner. Like Moses, there he's a planner. Moses planned to spoke to speak to Pharaoh. Even God told him to do that, and he also bring to uh, uh, Aaron his brother along to be his uh, spokesman. So and then. Joshua is a planner. Yes, Joshua is a planner. He plan how to um, follow God's instruction and go into lead the people of Israel into the land of Canaan. So all these people are planner. Nehemiah he plan how to build a wall. He had plan. And who else? Daniel, David, Solomon. They are all planner. So to only plan, and people who have plan will not be shocked. By the changes that go around, and God said He's the one who behind the changes that's happening. Yeah. So a plan that we plan may change, but our purpose is permanent. So we need to find out what is purpose that God has for our life. What is our life purpose? What is our um, what is our destiny? Why we're here on earth? Only then we can plan. How can we plan? If we don't know where the end is, so God said He's Alpha and Omega. Do you know why? Because He start the beginning and He also end the end. So He's a planner. Here He won from the beginning until certain state where my son come, where Jesus come, and then when the people are gonna be saved, and then when gonna gospel the kingdom be spread out all over the world, and then when He will bring an end, when He will come back again. See, so He have a perfect plan and perfect plan not just for the whole world, for the universe, but also for each and every one of us in our life. See how detailed he is. He's very, very detailed. God. In Proverbs twenty-one verse five, the plans of the diligence lead to profit, as surely as haste leads to poverty. So God told us, the diligent is the manager. Is the one who work hard. Who the one who know how to manage, plan. We plan and we lead us to profit. To profit. That person will plan and that. Through that plan, and we work hard, and that plan will lead to profits. But those who are hasty will lead to poverty. So God told us plan. We plan something because His mighty power is so powerful. But without our plan, He cannot exceed our expectation. He cannot exceed our imagination. So you, you, we pray that God give me such and such, so much. Okay, one million here, maybe hundred million there. Give me such a big house, Lord. Give me big, big house. But then, if we don't have a plan how to get that house, if we don't have a plan how to make such money, and how we, how God can bring us there, because at the end, it's not about God dropping us the money. God just like boom zooming, like uh, give us a house in front of us. No, at the end, it depend on how we plan to be there. And He said, "You do the planning, and I will show you how to get there." So this is the the job of God is He will provide the resource and show us the way, guide us to the right step. But our job is to do the planning. He doesn't tell us to think about the results. So all this we will see through each verses about how actually God、um, doesn't want us to concern, to be careful, uh, to care, uh, to to worry about the resources or money, or、um, how to get it work. He just asks us to plan, and then He will help us along the way when we plan. So where you succeed or fail in life depends on the plan you have or don't have. Do you have one? So you must have your plan. The same thing that you will tell your children also have to have one as well. Because without a plan, we don't know where to go. So every day your friends will come and pull you. Hey, let's come. Go to go here. Then、uh, go somewhere with us. Then you just said, okay, fine. If you don't have a plan, everyone will pull you somewhere, and then we just like go along. No, we need to have a plan ourselves because when we have a plan, we also can say no to certain people. No, no, you are you are you are not part of my plan. I'm not gonna go with you. So you can say no, and we, if we don't, if we have a plan, we also know who we should hang around with. 
because not everyone will just be in part of our circle or part of our plan. Yeah. So success depends on planning. Planning needs more work than the work itself. So when we plan something, it requires us to sit down and think and prepare. So this one takes time. But to work, well, you just do it. But planning takes a long time, takes more work to think than just the work itself. That's what it means. But then only through the plans then will make our work uh, works. So what is the planning? Well, this is planning is a measurement of the distance between your conception and your destiny. This is by Dr. Mars Munro. So planning is a management between your birth and your death. So when you're born and in between this type of period until you're dead. So what you plan to do? This is if you plan, have a proper plan, you can manage what the change will happen along the way. For example, well, I plan to be a doctor. So you will learn and study to be a doctor. If friends come along mid out the way saying, um, you know what, there's a business open up. Why don't we start something like shoes business, fashion business? And you feel like, oh no, I want to be a doctor. How can I go to fashion and do shoes business? It doesn't line up with my objective or line up with my destiny. No, sorry, I cannot go with you. So if you know a plan that you want to, who you want to be and what you want to do, you will surely know what to do and how to handle people who come along the way. You will not just like um, go and mix around with everyone or any road like open up you just follow. No, you know to say no and you know um, who to say yes to. Yeah. So in here, this was telling us that now unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than all that we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. So God is able to do more than what we ask or think. According to what? According to our plan. According to our plan. If we don't have a plan, God cannot exceed our imagination. He cannot exceed our uh, 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 expectation. Only through the plan. For example, we plan to have a medium-sized house. But God sees us so diligent. We are trusting Him. We are so honest. And God can exceed our expectation. Okay, I will give her a big house. Bigger than that. You see? Oh, I plan to outreach this year at least to bring 100 people to come to know uh, to the kingdom of God. Okay, then you plan. And God said, wow, she's so faithful and working so hard. I will give her 300. So God is so amazing. God will work out like that. He can exceed what we can ask or think only when we first think and plan. Yeah. So if we don't plan, well, he had nothing to work on. It's just like a person who asked me, um, well, I want to marry the husband. And then I said, okay, do you have any idea what type of man you want to marry? Um, yeah, just like me, just similar like, you know, yeah, similar like me. I said, well, what is similar like me, like you? Because it's big qualification, just like you. So we don't know. You have to be specific, see? With God, you have to be specific. Then he know, oh, okay, I send the right person to you. Yeah, you're not specific and it's so hard. You cannot give God such an open prayer. Oh, anything is fine. Anyone is fine. And God said, I, I said, no one because I don't know who to send. <laughs> you got it? So see, with God must be specific. That's why God told plan it, plan. Even plan to marry, plan to have children. Even plan to open a business. Everything has to be properly planned. Only then he will exceed our expectation. Only then he has something to work on. Well, the best way to reach our future is we have to invent a plan to reach there. Only then we can, only through planning, then we know where our future will be. If we don't have a plan, we can't know where our future will be. So life is like that, you know. 
Life is for. Okay, life is like a bow, and our our destiny is just like a just like a a, a arrow. So life is asking us. Wow, well, which direction you want me to? Um, which direction that you are going? Because I have such a power, I have all the energy, I have such a potential. I can turn anywhere that you want to go. But then we have to be sure which destiny, which direction we want to move. Because life is like that. If we don't have a plan, because life will not guide us into the way. Life will just twist us and around and we end up in someone else's life. Isaiah 32 verse 8. This telling us um, about the plans. But the noble make noble plans. By and by noble deeds they stand. Still who make the plans. It doesn't matter what happened along the way, you must stand. The word stand is mean, even challenge coming in, storm coming, um, husband and wife not agree, children will not agree with your plan, and maybe it's friend betray, staff cheating, or whatever along the, come along the way to your life, to your business and your family, you stand on your plan. You must go on. It doesn't matter what. You will not change because of the challenges that's coming along because challenge is always come anyway. So if one we have a plan, we will not change. If, even though the people will try to be emotional, will try to persecute us, will try to cause trouble or betray us, we will not change. We will persevere. We'll continue to persevere. Life is like that. So when we decided to do something, we stand on our plan. Yeah. So here, plan is the greatest act of faith. Remember the Lord said the just shall live by faith. So how to prove that our faith works? We must have a plan. And a just shall not live by hope. So hope alone is not enough. We must move to faith. Because faith is the substance of things that hope for. And to have a higher faith, we need to take Plan, we have to have planning. We have to start planning and then take actions. Plan is the greatest act of faith. Well, if we have faith in life, we shall plan. It doesn't matter what we have in life, we must plan. The just shall not live by hope, but we live by faith. So this is our life. And here, Gordon um, Hinckley, he said, you can't plow a field simply by turning it over in your mind. So if we have faith, we not, cannot just keep thinking in our mind and our heart. Oh, I believe. I will have a house. I believe that my children will have a good job, or start a business. But you only believe here. But if you start to plan your life along the way to have the house and how you're going to have it, then you are live on a higher level of faith and which is you start your planning and God said you cannot just live you know uh, uh, this this gentleman Gordon Henley said you cannot just keep in your mind the thought that you have you need to put it on paper you need to plan yeah so don't stop it at our thought but we must take action by planning turn our thought thought into a design so this is how we how we control life by turning our thought into a paper into, uh, uh, um, into a design how we design our life how our life is going to be how when our children grow up what you're going to be what what you want to do and where you want to be so this is something that you need to plan ahead but thing change happen oh I know I planned this way but now it's slightly happen not according to what I really like but I pray to the Lord he will guide my step you see but only then you know what to change you know what to do because you already have plan but if you don't have plan you have you have empty thought yeah you have nothing to um, move around and God has nothing that you give him to work on so things will not work out as we want so in the book of Ecclesiastes 9 
verse 10 is telling us that we have to put all our energies and wisdom and thought into the life that we live on right now on earth. Don't wait to go to heaven. Don't wait until it's too late. And here, through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit through Solomon, and he gives Solomon this type of wisdom. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. In, for in the realm of death, where you are going, there is, no, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. So whatever we find to do is mean whatever be the work that God put in our hand, do with all our might, with proper planning and calculating and estimating and everything must be well, well calculated. This is life. We cannot take our life for granted. Everything, every step that we step forward, everything that we do, people that we meet, it should be lined up with our life with our destiny it should be lined up with what god has for our life with our purpose so we cannot just um, running around and expect we will reach the destiny that god has for us we may take a detour but we cannot off to another road a detour will bring us back to the destiny but if we change our destiny our destination we will end up in a different destination so plan must make sure that our plan will bring us to where God has put in our dream when we are small. Normally, the, th the, the dreams, the passion that God has for our life is always appear in our thought, in our thinking. It never disappears. That's the same thing that God has a plan for Joseph, right? Remember that God has a plan for Joseph? God told Joseph, you will sit on the throne. You will become a great leader. But then, Joseph didn't figure out where he's going to be there. Um, he just like know that God is with him. But you know how God brought Joseph along the road, right? God brought Joseph to be betrayed by his brothers and sold out to be a slave and then sold to Potiphar. And afterward, Potiphar's wife a cheat on him and Potter put him in jail and from few years time in jail he made friends with the jailers he made friends with people in the jail and but he put out his trust his plan that God already put in his his mind and he keep connecting with God but then after get out from jail where God put Joseph yeah become the Prime Minister of Egypt so who, who can explain this type of plan? Who can explain this type of step to bring Joseph into become the Prime Minister of Egypt? That's because Joseph keep working on what God put in his heart, his thought of the plan that God has for him. He never give up. He trusts that the Lord will only bring him to the destiny that already designed, already told him. So he put, he full of faith even though in jail, he keep the connection. He work on his plan. He tried to make friends with the jailer. He tried to see, oh, some guy who, who put in jail from the from Pharaoh's office. Ah, if I make friends with them, when they get out, they could help me. You see, even though Joseph understood. The destiny is there, but then he keep working on day to day's life. His objective is to be there where God already told him. So he knew that God would do, will work on something, will bring him there. Then he keep working along the plan. What Zig Ziglar said is, if you don't have daily objectives, you qualify as a dreamer. See, we, many people are dreamers. Wow, I want to do this, I want to do that. But never think and put the thought into the plan and write down and take action to work on it. No, many people just keep saying, yeah, but doing nothing. And we know that even though like Joseph's case, right? If we plan something, even though we fail, we went through many challenges or storms in life and God guarantee that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. 
So God called everyone according to His purpose. Even though we went through, even though like Joseph went through the pit, sold as a slave, and then afterward, even though put in jail, but know that his destiny is to be what? To be the leader, to be the prime minister. So he knew that. So he worked out everything for that purpose, for that very purpose. So this is when Joseph, same thing for everyone's life, same thing in our life, it's all the same. Planning is the key to unlock our future. Our future is behind a beautiful door of the, our dream, but it takes planning to open that door. It takes planning to open that door. So we need to plan. Even though we have a, a beautiful, beautiful dream and passions of doing something, even God shows us the vision. But if we don't plan, if we don't put it into a paper, write it down, our thought, if we don't really work hard and take action toward that plan, we will never work. Only qualify as a dreamer. And we don't want to be a dreamers. Proverbs 19 verse 21 Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. So we have a plan, we do, we have many plans, but it's God's purpose. So any plan that God, that line up with God's purpose shall prevail, it shall succeed yeah, in life. So here is the principle of planning. How do we plan? Our dream may be real. But our plan gives them breath and gives them life. So we need to dream, plan very carefully. Dreaming is not enough. We must plan. Dreams are waiting for a plan. In Proverbs 16 verse 1, To a man belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the reply of the tongue. So the man who do the plan, Human, we are the one who do the planning. And God is the one who answers our time, who give us the resource, provide, who will supply us, who will lead us to meet the right person, who will make our plan succeed according to His purpose. So in Proverbs 12 verse, well, I want to explain a little bit here. So if we have to take our responsibility to plan because we take control over times and changes by planning, not God. So if you don't like what is happening right now, we have to start to plan now. Then easily we can estimate what will happen in our life in the next five years, in the next 10 years, or in the next 15 years for long term. It's only through our plan. God said you don't plan, Mm, when change comes, when changes happen, when the time, when certain season comes, you can't adapt to it. You cannot control it. So you will just like let the, future, the train of the future run over and you will be stuck and live in crisis and cry out. So don't, God don't, don't, doesn't want his children to be like that. He wants everyone to be prosper and succeed in life. Proverbs 12 verse 5. The plans of the righteous are just, but the advice of the wicked is deceitful. And here there's another translation also say the plans, oh no, the thoughts of the righteous are right, but the device of the wicked is deceitful. So what it means here, God said whatever we think in our heart is right. So whatever we desire to do, we want to do, and we come up with a plan and doing it, it's right. We just need to interpret our thought into a paper and write into a plan. And God said, that is come from the Lord. If that thought, if that passion, if that dream doesn't go away, that's from God. But it's only appear for a short while and then it's gone and cannot be God. You always want to be, um, a fashion designer, but then the, the thought is keep appearing, appearing. I like fashion, I like designing, I like sewing, I like clothes, I like to dress up nicely. But then it's come to one time and one thought appearing. Oh wow, I like camera. I think it's nice to take a nice picture of myself. But after a while, then that um, desire is gone. 
But then you keep thinking about, wow, I can design nice clothes, I can sell it, I can open a nice shop uh, with all my design, I can happy pour a lady to dress up nicely through my design. Uh, then it could be from God. But the camera thing is not from the Lord because it's only appeared for a while and then it's gone. You may like it for a while, then cannot be God. That cannot be part of your purpose of life. That cannot be your destiny, where you're supposed to be. So your destiny should be a designer, a fashion designer. So we need to understand purpose through the desire that God put in our heart. And whatever we think is right, God said, because we are righteous, we are with God. Yeah, so don't be afraid of thinking and interpret and bring the thought Write it down and interpret into the plan. This is what the Lord told us and want us to do. And after we do all things, what He tells us to do, commit to the Lord whatever you do. And He will establish your plans. You see, you write down, okay, Lord, I want to set up a fashion designing school. Oh, Lord, I want to have a, also a fashion designing team. And this is what I want to have. This is what I have right now. So, Lord, I also want to set up like a um, I saw that so many um, single ladies or lady that don't have job. I want to set up like a vocational training, train them to do fashion design. So Lord, can you show me? So Lord, he will show you, he will establish the plan for you. But then you have to commit to him by telling him, this is what I do. So you write down what you plan to do. Then he will show you the detailed plan where to get the resources, where to get fun, who to meet, how to get licensed which door he will open for he will open everything because he will provide he will supply he will send the people he will send uh, 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 people to help you and he will give you ideas as well only when he will commit everything to him in Proverbs 16 verse 9 we can make our plans but the Lord determines our step so we are the one who make our plan but how to move there how to be there remember he's the one who give us the resort he's the one to give us a, uh, who give us a timing and he's the one who provides and he's the one who make the way and give us a chance so he's the one who determine our steps which step we supposed to which step we supposed to move step one what we do step two when it's going to be step three when it's going to happen the same thing, like God, he's a planner, right? So when God told Satan in the book of uh, Genesis 3, God said, all right, Satan, this woman that you use, her seed will crush your head. God only said that. It's all in him, God's plan. But then the timing will took 4,000 years from what he declared in Genesis 3 to when Jesus was born. 4,000 years. See, God decide the timing. God decide the period. He decreed the duration, when things gonna happen. But we have to commit to him and he commit himself of his plan. He commit him, uh, his plan to himself as well. Yeah. So planning is the job of every human being. We cannot just keep blaming God. What happened? Uh, can you help me? Can you? No, we need to plan and God can help us. Can He has something to work on. In the book of Proverbs, okay, next one. This is a beautiful story about planning. How He teach us to plan in our life. And the priorities of planning. So let's um, read this story together in the book of Luke, where chapter 14, verse 28 to 33. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. So this is this story created by Jesus. He invented the story up. And every word that he used has a very serious meaning. This turned to be the step of telling us how to plan in our life. Look at this, what he says, suppose one of you wants to build. So what do you want to build? A tower. 
So first, you need to know what you want to be. So he showed us what do you want to be. So that's a clear vision of the picture of your destiny of what do you want, who you want to be, and what do you want to be. Right? So until we get a clear vision, then the first thing is our priority is to sit down. We must calm down. We're not going to rush to do the work or to buy construction material or, or no, to go ahead and get an uh, engineer and uh, uh, architecture, start to draw uh, the, uh, the, the blueprint and all this stuff. No, no, no. He want us to put down our own plan first. Okay, so we need to know what we want. And then our priority is to sit down, we stop and thinking and meditate on God's word and on his plan for our life and to get his idea. Ask God, can you show me, give me some wisdom, revelation on how to plan this, how to make this work. So you have to spend time with God in prayer and study his word and think what God wants us to think because he will speak to our mind through our heart and number four is step four is estimate he said estimate remember what the story is about first sit down consider whether is able to uh, oh no this uh, previous story so estimate see estimate the cost the word estimate is it means we need to think and calculate and predict of what will happen is there any challenge will happen along the way is um, is there any challenge in getting fun uh, someone will persecute it is there anyone will against this, this plan that we plan to do um, is my husband going to agree is my wife going to agree is my family member or my staff is there anyone want to against it Will they like it or do I have any power manpower to help it in this world do I have enough capital so think about everything so and use our imagination to predict what could happen. But in business, we will use SWOT to analyze. Which is what is our strength, our weakness, yes. And then we will study about our opportunities. What is the opportunity if we create something, if we invent something, if we do something. And what is the threat, what is the risk in doing that. So that is a um, strategy of being one of the planning, uh, one of the strategy in the plan. Number five is the cost. We need to calculate the cost. Time that we spend on working on that project, we need to start, uh, calculate the cost. The cost is including our commitment. Are we committing it? Are we taking out some time to work on it? Are we serious about it? So this is are the cost before we start. Or else, just like that gentleman, uh, people love it. You start a building, but you never finish. There's so many buildings here in this town and in Sinoville, where people start it, but never finish. Okay, check if you have enough. You must think, imagine, to see if you have enough study. Do you have enough? Study the cost. So God said in Ephesians 3.20, He said He's able to do exceeding abundantly about all that we ask or think. So how He can exceed our um, expectation? Only when we think, then He can expect our thought. So we must first think and put in the plan. Then He can uh, exceed it. He can, okay, I see that you're really diligent in working on that project. I want to exceed your project i want to give you a bigger project so god will send us more results than what we ask so god is like that but we need to start something and number seven estimate again see if we can complete it see we need to sit down estimate if we see if we can complete it we cannot just start something and cannot complete before jesus is born jesus is not slain or not died on the cross two thousand years ago he already died in God's mind, in God's plan, since before the foundation of the world, since before God created Adam. Jesus already died already. Because God always had the backup plan. If Adam failed, fine. Original Adam will come and restore everything back. So God has a backup plan. So Jesus is not a surprise. 
to came. So when Jesus came, and then John said, Behold the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world. This is what John declared. How would John know? Because that's always in God's mind. That's always in God's plan. The plan kept him enduring the cross. When he see the cross, he joyfully moving forward. He know that that's his destiny. I must move in there. He endured the cross every day. He already know the pain. Yeah. So that is a strategy. This is a very important for today's message. So God gave us all this strategy. His story. This story invented by Jesus. And Jesus is God. So he gave us the key how to plan our life or plan a business or plan a work or plan a family or plan a project somewhere. And this is another story, two story that he taught within this chapter. He said, or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. When he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000. If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. Look at these words. Suppose a king. So it means if you want to war against someone or fight against someone, that is more powerful. That is has, as a richer. And then you know that you can't negotiate or you can't win against that person. What are you supposed to do? You know that you can't win. You know that you can't win against that war. You know that you can't, um, for example, you got, um, um, you buy something and then you cannot pay off everything. And then you said, okay, I, um, let me, uh, let me go back and negotiate with you and see, you know, if you can give me an easy term that I can pay out because you can't, because whatever you bought is more than what you can afford. So in this case, what to do? Jesus said, you go and negotiate. You go negotiate back. Ask for terms of peace means renegotiate. Renegotiate. Or if you continue, you know that you can't do it. So what do you have to do? Negotiate now. Yeah, you know you can't, uh, you can't handle this. So in war, if you know that you can't complete it or you cannot win over that case, and you know that person is more powerful, so go and negotiate with the person. Go and make terms of peace. This is what he means. He gives us a strategy to negotiate. So never stop negotiation. In the kingdom of God, the strategies of making plan is also negotiation. If things doesn't happen as what we plan along the way, and we see that while the situation is too, too serious for me to handle it, then, okay, I go negotiate it. Lord, can you tell me what I'm supposed to do now? Re rethink it. Re re it means you go back and think again. So what can you do to change the whole situation? Nothing that is permanent, only God. So that's why we need to plan and live according to the plan. When situation, worst case happen, we know what to do. We know how to twist, we know how to turn around. So this is a strategy that he given us. Go and negotiate terms. So what we need to stop and think and plan. See, when we first sit down and consider, so this one is means stop doing war, stop doing work, sit down for it, consider, think and think and put in a plan, uh, in, in the paper, uh, the plan. So whether he is able with 10,000 men. So we look at our resource. Wow, I bought that house big and I don't have enough money. And now what to do? Renegotiate. Hey, can you bring the price down a little bit? Can you change the term a little bit? so that I can pay you and this much and this much, then I can get the house. See, always negotiate. Yeah, because it's too big for you to handle. God told us like that. So the planning is very important for us to succeed in life. We need to plan. Planning is the only key that can regulate and controlling the change. There's no other. So this is a message for today. 
All right, let's bow our head and finish the message. Father, we want to thank you right now for your message. Thank you for your words, O oh Lord, that your words are showing us the key of planning and that you told us that you're behind the changes and you teach your children to plan according to the change that you have for each and situation and in the world today and you want your children to be successful all the time and to be able to control the changes by planning so lord we commit our plan into your hand you said that you will guide our step and make our plan succeed so lord we thank you that all your word and we thank you that you continue to guide us always holy spirit we commit our thing in your hand right now all the plan for our life show us our purpose Show us the life purpose that you have for our lives. Show us the destiny. And we will plan according to the destinies that you have for our life. We commit everything to your hand. In Jesus' name, amen.